What's up? <laughs> Look at my hair. What is going on? Jesus Christ. Cannot get a haircut right now because of COVID. What's up? Welcome. I'll be covering this uh, Biden speech live. Look at that. I almost perfectly lined up the screen without even knowing it. Amazing. Um, covering this live as it uh, comes in, of course. And uh, also going over will be going over if we have time beforehand maybe i'll do that the uh covid rates between countries and the vaccination rate as well showing you um in fact how well the u.s is doing compared to basically everybody except for uh, israel but before i get there i'm gonna do this for a second <laughs> because today i had a video demonetized by youtube that is about Bernie praising Lula da Silva, the former president of Brazil. And uh, YouTube here demonetized it for hateful and derogatory content, saying that there is hate or harassment towards individuals or groups. If you are on Twitter, please go on Twitter and retweet this ridiculous crap. Um, I <laughs> There is some crazy shit going on at YouTube. Uh, to label this as a hateful video is completely insane. That said, not the most important thing, but I had to get that out there just because it was so ridiculous. And the issue for me, like now when it comes to these videos de being demonetized, it's not even the video being demonetized being the issue. I have supporters on Patreon. I get super chats. Um, I have other help uh, through other means like, you know, Twitch, super chat, whatever. Um, the issue really for me is that these videos also get deplatformed, so less people see them. That ultimately is the, the main issue I have with these sorts of um, responses or actions taken by YouTube for completely ridiculous reasons. Anyways, I want to make sure we don't miss this, so I will have the uh, audio on. So once he starts talking, which should happen in about five minutes, I guess. Um, but just in case he comes in early. But yeah, insane. Also, I'll be taking chats throughout uh, the stream, though I, I will try not to talk over Biden too much. I know, I don't know, there's debate over whether people care about that or not. Some people want to hear Biden completely. Other people don't mind if I talk over him occasionally. Um, but I will try to keep the speaking to a minimum when he is giving his speech. Now, since we do have some time here, fantastic. Let me first go over what is in the recent COVID relief bill. Uh, that just uh, was signed by Joe Biden. So I covered a lot of this in video uh, yesterday, but while I have spent a lot of time criticizing this relief bill because it doesn't have the minimum wage increase, it doesn't have checks worth $2,000, but $1,400, there is actually a lot of good in this bill. Now, there are no structural fixes to anything here. A lot of it is, this is just a Band-Aid. But especially when it comes to, say, the, I'm not sure if it's even in this list, but the um, the child credit. So this tax credit is now not even really a tax credit as much as it is, uh, as it is a UBI, because these payments will be going out, from my understanding, monthly, as opposed to you getting it back at the end of the year. And it's, so just to summarize here, if you have a child under six, you get 3000 $600 for the year, so about 300 bucks a, a month. And if you have a child uh, over six, you get 3000 So this is for the entire year. Um, it sounds like they want to continue it past that, but they, you know, I guess they're going to take another shot at doing that eventually. But that's pretty damn good, uh, considering this is, I mean, people with kids obviously, for the most part, need more help. Um, and so to get that kind of money into people's hands on a more consistent basis, 
to make it almost like a universal basic income is a fantastic uh, improvement to that system. It's also similar to what other countries have. I mean, many countries have a, a tax credit. The U.S. had one as well. But this is more of a universal basic income now, the way it's being uh, uh, rolled out. Also, so a regular family, uh, the, the average family of four, will be getting $5,600 because the kids also each get this amount. So while well, under the Trump uh, bill, the checks were less for children, they are now the same for children. So even though these are down to $1,400 and not 2000 kids are now getting the same amount in, of money from these checks, which for the average family of four, $5,600 is, is pretty good, assuming you make under $150,000 as a couple or under $75,000 as, uh, as an individual. Um, also, weekly unemployment, this used to be 600 now it's down to 300 so clearly, you know, that's been cut a bit. This goes until September 6th, which from my understanding is Labor Day. <laughs> it seems weird to cut that off at Labor Day, but we'll see if they uh, extend that. And also a lot of money here, you know, housing assistance, public schools. A lot of the money is going to people as opposed to uh, corporations, which is what a lot of the money under Trump uh, was going to under the, the CARES Act. So... There is some good stuff in this bill, even though I've spent a lot of time criticizing it. Um, can't, you know, deny reality there. Also, since we have some more time, maybe a minute before Joe Biden comes out, uh, let's look at COVID rate here. So daily new confirmed COVID-19 cases per million people. This is the rolling seven-day average. Everybody right now, oh, everybody, there's four countries here. <laughs> I should have put more in the list. But um, for the most part, uh, numbers are down. Let's try some other random countries. France. How's Brazil doing? Um, wow. Okay. Some wackiness here. But uh, US, UK, Canada down. But look at the comparison here. So you have the US, of course, you know, had massive, massive COVID numbers. Um, and now, just make sure the speech hasn't started. Nope. And now, uh, in terms of vaccinations, not too bad. So Israel, of course, dominating everybody, though, if you're in Gaza or the West Bank, you're not getting vaccinations unless that's changed since then. I haven't checked the recent news on that. But last I checked, uh, only citizens uh, of Israel and not, not Gaza and the West Bank are getting them. But um, UK doing pretty well with vaccination rate. US doing very well. Uh, and now Canada, where I am, we're all the way down here. <laughs> we are doing horrible in Canada with the vaccine. Uh, a lot of the issue is just getting the vaccine in the country. Um, we, we have the, the capacity to administer it. It's getting enough of the vaccine actually in to deliver to people. So current estimates right now for, for Canadians is, uh, so people over 80 are getting it right now. Um, the next month, I believe it's, or the end of this month, it's 60 plus. And then, you know, sometime in the summer is when people like me are supposed to get it. Meanwhile, from my understanding, Biden will announce that by May 1st, every American should be able to get the uh, vaccine. I'm just checking to make sure this hasn't started on a different channel, like PBS. By the nope. Okay. Just double checking. So, um... Yeah, it it is uh, kind of stunning how quickly things turned around for Americans. Now, part of that as well, in terms of how, how much the numbers have dropped, could be because so many people in the U.S. have had <laughs> the virus already that they've already built up a semi-immunity to it, uh, at least in the short term. There is still a lot of data coming on, on how long that immunity actually lasts, or if it lasts at all or if it has any impact with the with the new variants. But um, I'm sure that's part of the equation here. But also, the vaccination rate being as high as it is, at least compared to other countries right now in the U.S., definitely impressive. This is the one area that I think Biden clearly has been a benefit. There is, you know, there's not, there's there's less of a difference when it comes to other issues, especially foreign policy. But... When it comes to the issue of COVID-19 and how to actually treat a pandemic, um, I think it's obvious that Biden has had a, here we go, much better response. 
Good evening, my fellow Americans. Tonight, I'd like to talk to you about where we are as we mark one year since everything stopped because of this pandemic. A year ago, we were hit with a virus that was met with silence and spread unchecked. Denials for days, weeks, then months. That led to more deaths, more infections, more stress, and more loneliness. Photos and videos from 2019 feel like they were taken in another era. The last vacation, the last birthday with friends, the last holiday with extended family. While it was different for everyone, we all lost something, a collective suffering, a collective sacrifice, a year filled with the loss of life and the loss of living for all of us. But in the loss, we saw how much there was to gain in appreciation, respect, and gratitude. Finding light in the darkness is a very American thing to do. In fact, it may be the most American thing we do. And that's what we've done. We've seen frontline and essential workers risking their lives, sometimes losing them to save and help others. Researchers and scientists racing for a vaccine. And so many of you, as Hemingway wrote, being strong in all the broken places. I know it's been hard. I truly know. As I've told you before, I carry a card in my pocket with the number of Americans who have died from COVID to date. It's on the back of my schedule. As of now, total deaths in America, 527,726. That's more deaths than in World War I, World War II, the Vietnam War, and 9-11 combined. There were husbands, wives, sons and daughters, Grandparents, friends, neighbors, young and old. They leave behind loved ones, unable to truly grieve or to heal, even to have a funeral. But I'm also thinking about everyone else who lost this past year to natural causes, by cruel fate of accident or other disease. They, too, died alone. They, too, leave behind loved ones who are hurting badly. You know, you've often heard me say before, I talk about the longest walk any parent can make is up a short flight of stairs to his child's bedroom to say, I'm sorry, but I lost my job. I can't be here anymore. Like my dad told me when he lost his job in Scranton, so many of you have had to make that same walk this past year. You lost your job. You closed your business facing eviction, homelessness, hunger, a loss of control, maybe worst of all, a loss of hope. Watching a generation of children who may be set back up to a year or more because they've not been in school because of their loss of learning. It's the details of life that matter the most. And we miss those details, the big details and the small moments, weddings, birthdays, graduations, all the things that needed to happen but didn't. The first date, the family reunions, the Sunday night rituals, it's all has exacted a terrible cost on the psyche of so many of us. For we are fundamentally a people who want to be with others, to talk, to laugh, to hug, to hold one another. But this virus has kept us apart. <clears throat> Grandparents haven't seen their children or grandchildren. Parents haven't seen their kids. Kids haven't seen their friends. The things we used to do that always filled us with joy have become things we couldn't do and broke our hearts. Too often, we've turned against one another, a mask, the easiest thing to do to save lives, 
Sometimes it divides us. States pit it against one another instead of working with each other. Vicious hate crimes against Asian Americans who've been attacked, harassed, blamed, and scapegoated. At this very moment, so many of them, our fellow Americans, they're on the front lines of this pandemic trying to save lives. And still, still, they're forced to live in fear for their lives just walking down streets in America. It's wrong, it's un-American, and it must stop. Look, we know what we need to do to beat this virus. Tell the truth. Follow the scientists and the science. Work together. Put trust and faith in our government to fulfill its most important function, which is protecting the American people. No function more important. We need to remember the government isn't some foreign force in a distant capital. No, it's us, all of us, we the people. For you and I, that America thrives when we give our hearts, when we turn our hands to common purpose. And right now, my friends, we're doing just that. And I have to say, as your president, I'm grateful to you. Last summer, I was in Philadelphia and I met a small business owner, a woman. I asked her, I said, what do you need most? I'll never forget what she said to me. She said, looking me in the eye, she said, I just want the truth. The truth. Just tell me the truth. Think of that. My fellow Americans, you're owed nothing less than the truth. And for all of you asking when things will get back to normal, here is the truth. The only way to get our lives back, to get our economy back on track, is to beat the virus. You've been hearing me say that for while I was running and the last 50 days I've been president. But this is one of the most complex operations we've under, under, ever undertaken as a nation in a long time. That's why I'm using every power I have as President of the United States to put us on a war footing to get the job done. Sounds like hyperbole, but I mean it, a war footing. And thank God we're making some real progress now. In my first full day in office, I outlined for you a comprehensive strategy to beat this pandemic. We've spent every day since attempting to carry it out. Two months ago, the country, this country, didn't have nearly enough vaccine supply to vaccinate all or ever near all of the American public. But soon we will. We've been working with vaccine manufacturers, Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, to manufacture and purchase hundreds of millions of doses of these three safe, effective vaccines. And now, at the direction and with the assistance of my administration, Johnson & Johnson is working together with a competitor, Merck, to speed up and increase the capacity to manufacture new Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which is one shot. In fact, just yesterday, I announced, and I met with the CEOs of both companies, I announced our plan to buy an additional 100 million doses of Johnson & Johnson vaccines. These two companies, competitors, have come together for the good of the nation, and they should be applauded for it. It's truly a national effort, just like we saw during World War II. Now, because all the work we've done, we'll have enough vaccine supply for all adults in America by the end of May. That's months ahead of schedule. And we're mobilizing thousands of vaccinators to put the vaccine in one's arm. Calling active duty military, FEMA, retired doctors and nurses, administrators, and those to administer the shots. And we've been creating more places to get the shots. We've made it possible for you to get a vaccine at nearly one, any one of 10,000 pharmacies across the country, just like you get your flu shot. 
We're also working with governors and mayors in red states and blue states to set up and support nearly 600 federally supported vaccination centers that administer hundreds of thousands of shots per day. You can drive up to a stadium or a large parking lot, get your shot, never leave your car, and drive home in less than an hour. We've been sending vaccines to hundreds of community health centers all across America, located in underserved areas. And we've been deploying, and we will deploy more, mobile vehicles and pop-up clinics to meet you where you live so those who are least able to get the vaccine are able to get it. We continue to work on making at-home testing available. And we've been focused on serving people in the hardest-hit communities of this pandemic, Black, Latino, Native American, and rural communities. So what does all this add up to? When I took office 50 days ago, only 8 percent of the Americans, after months, only 8 percent of those over the age of 65 had gotten their first vaccination. Today, that number is 65 percent. Just 14 percent of Americans over the age of 75, 50, 50 days ago, had gotten their first shot. Today, that number is well over 70 percent. With new guidance from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, that came out on Monday, it means simply this. Millions and millions of grandparents who went months without being able to hug their grandkids can now do so. And the more people are fully vaccinated, the CD will continue to provide additional guidance on what you can do in the workplace, places of worship with your friends, as well as travel. When I came into office, you may recall, I set a goal that many of you said was that kind of way over the top. I said I intended to get 100 million shots in people's arms in my first 100 days in office. Tonight, I can say we're not only going to meet that goal, we're going to beat that goal. Because we've actually on track to reach this goal of 100 million shots in arms on my 60th day in office. No other country in the world has done this. None. And I want to talk about the next steps we're thinking about. First, tonight, I'm announcing that I will direct all states, tribes, and territories to make all adults, people 18 and over, eligible to be vaccinated no later than May 1. Let me say that again. All adult Americans will be eligible to get a vaccine no later than May 1. That's much earlier than expected. Well, let me be clear. That doesn't mean everyone's going to have that shot immediately, but it means you'll be able to get in line beginning May 1. Every adult will be eligible to get their shot. And to do this, we're going to go from a million shots a day that I promised in December, before I was sworn in, to maintaining beating our current pace of 2 million shots a day, outpacing the rest of the world. Secondly, at the time when every adult is eligible in May, we will launch, with our partners, new tools to make it easier for you to find the vaccine and where to get the shot, including a new website that will help you first find the place to get vaccinated and the one nearest you. No more searching day and night for an appointment for you and your loved ones. Thirdly, with the passage of the American Rescue Plan, and I thank again the House and Senate for passing it, and my announcement last month of a plan to vaccinate teachers and school staff, including bus drivers, we can accelerate massive nationwide effort to reopen our schools safely and meet my goal that I stated at the same time, about 100 million shots, of opening a majority of K through 8 schools in my first 100 days in office. This is going to be the number one priority of my new Secretary of Education, Miguel Cardona. Fourth, in the coming weeks, we will issue further guidance on what you can and cannot do once fully vaccinated to lessen the confusion, to keep people safe, and encourage more people to get vaccinated.
And finally, fifth, and maybe most importantly, I promise I will do everything in my power. I will not relent until we beat this virus. But I need you, the American people. I need you. I need every American to do their part. And that's not hyperbole. I need you. I need you to get vaccinated when it's your turn and when you can find an opportunity. And to help your family, your friends, your neighbors get vaccinated as well. Because here's the point. If we do all this, if we do our part, if we do this together, by July the 4th, there's a good chance you, your families and friends, will be able to get together in your backyard or in your neighborhood and have a cookout and a barbecue and celebrate Independence Day. That doesn't mean large events with lots of people together, but it does mean small groups will be able to get together. After this long, hard year, that will make this Independence Day something truly special, where we not only mark our independence as a nation, but we begin to mark our independence from this virus. But to get there, we can't let our guard down. This fight is far from, order, from over, as I told the woman in Pennsylvania. I'll tell you the truth. A July 4th with your loved ones is the goal. But a goal, a lot can happen. Conditions can change. The scientists have made clear that things may get worse again as new variants of the virus spread. And we've got work to do to ensure that everyone has confidence in the safety and effectiveness of all three vaccines. So my message to you is this. Listen to Dr. Fauci, one of the most distinguished and trusted voices in the world. He's assured us the vaccines are safe. They underwent rigorous scientific review. I know they're safe. Vice President Harris, Harris and I know they're safe. That's why we got the vaccine publicly in front of cameras so for the world to see, so you could see us do it. The first lady and the second gentleman also got vaccinated. Talk to your family, friends, your neighbors, the people you know best who've gotten the vaccine. We need everyone to get vaccinated. We need everyone to keep washing their hands, stay socially distanced, and keep wearing the mask as recommended by the CDC. Because even if we devote every resource we have, Beating this virus and getting back to normal depends on national unity. And national unity isn't just how politics and politicians vote in Washington, or what the loudest voices say on cable or online. Unity is what we do together as fellow Americans. Because if we don't stay vigilant and the conditions change, then we may have to reinstate restrictions to get back on track. And please, we don't want to do that again. We've made so much progress. This is not the time to let up. Just as we were emerging from a dark winter into a hopeful spring and summer is not the time to not stick with the rules. I'll close with this. We've lost so much over the last year. We've lost family and friends. We've lost businesses and dreams we spent years building. We've lost time, time with each other. And our children have lost so much time with their friends, time with their schools. No graduation ceremonies this, this spring. No graduations from college, high school, moving up ceremonies. You know, and there's something else we lost. We lost faith in whether our government and our democracy can deliver on really hard things for the American people. But as I stand here tonight, we're proving once again something I've said time and time again to the probably tired of hearing me say it. I say it to foreign leaders and domestic alike. It's never, ever a good bet to bet against the American people. America is coming back. The development, manufacture, and distribution of vaccines in record time is a true miracle of science. 
It's one of the most extraordinary achievements any country has ever accomplished. And we also just saw the Perseverance rover land on Mars. Stunning images of our dreams that are now reality. Another example of the extraordinary American ingenuity, commitment, and belief in science and one another. And today, I signed into law the American Rescue Plan, an historic piece of legislation that delivers immediate relief to millions of people, includes $1,400 in direct rescue checks, payments. That means a typical family of four earning about $110,000 will get checks for $5,600 deposited if they have direct deposit or in a check, a Treasury check. It extends unemployment benefits. It helps small businesses. It lowers health care premiums for many. It provides food and nutrition, keeps families in their homes, and it will cut child poverty in this country in half, according to the experts. And it funds all the steps I've just described to beat the virus and create millions of jobs. In the coming weeks and months, I'll be traveling along with the First Lady, the Vice President, the Second Gentleman, members of my Cabinet, to speak directly to you, to tell you the truth about how the American Rescue Plan meets the moment. And if it fails at any pace, I will acknowledge that it failed, but it will not. About how after long, dark years, one whole year, there is hope and light of better days ahead. If we all do our part, this country will be vaccinated soon. Our economy will be on the mend. Our kids will be back in school. And we'll have proven once again that this country can do anything, hard things, big things, important things. Over a year ago, no one could have imagined what we were about to go through. But now, we're coming through it, and it's a shared experience that binds us together as a nation. We are bound together by the loss and the pain of the days that have gone by. We're also bound together by the hope and the possibilities of the days in front of us. My fervent prayer for our country is that after all we've been through, we'll come together as one people, one nation, one America. I believe we can and we will. We're seizing this moment, and history, I believe, will record. We faced and overcame one of the toughest and darkest periods in this nation's history, darkest we've ever known. I promise you, we'll come out stronger with a renewed faith in ourselves, a renewed commitment to one another, to our communities and to our country. This is the United States of America. And there's nothing, nothing, from the bottom of my heart, I believe this, there's nothing we can't do when we do it together. Except raise God wages. God bless you all. And please, God, give solace to all those people who lost someone. And may God protect our troops. Thank you for taking the time to listen. I look forward to seeing you. All right. As he walks away. All right, let me go over uh, what we learned in this speech. And also, um, I'll take all your super chats as well. I'm just going to leave this up since there's nothing else to really leave up here. I'll just leave this up. So this is what's going to be. This is what's in the, uh, the COVID relief bill that just passed. But I'll, there's a piece that he touched on that I forgot to touch on earlier that I do want to talk about after uh, I go over the speech, and that is the uh, healthcare premiums aspect of this, which really surprised me in this bill. I was impressed by it. But before I get to that, all right, this speech, um, you know, overall, it's it's Joe Biden. It, it's a very, you know, I, I'm not sure how, how to categorize these speeches now because this feels so old school. Like, listen to a speech like this, it's like we're back in the 90s. Like, this is... That said, <laughs> there, what he discussed in this speech and what he detailed 
some of it is actually good. Uh, but also some of the framing around some of what he talked about, I, again, just, you know, typical uh, standard democratic weirdness. So let me start with, um, so this this is just a thing that bothers me personally. I'm not sure if anyone else picks up on this. I'm sure you all do. But centering small business owners in everything. That's all these politicians, all they, all they ever talk about. So Joe Biden at the beginning of the speech discusses how I talked to a small business owner and I asked, I asked her what she wanted. She said she wanted the truth. Okay. Did you ask or did you talk to a, a low wage worker and ask what he wants? I think he wants higher wages. <laughs> so there is just this, this uh, injection of they have to talk about the business community, but they're never going to talk about, you know, large corporations. So they're going to talk about small business to make it, you know, they're very relatable across the board. See, we're all about small business, just like conservatives. And because we're talking about small business, it, you know, we're not talking about corporations. So it's a it's a message that, that everyone loves. But it's <laughs> it's all these politicians ever do. Talk about the small business owner. Again, just a personal thing, uh, a small thing that bothers me, but it's just it's so phony. And again, if he talked to low-wage workers, I think he would get a different answer. Also, um, he romanticized how Johnson & Johnson came together with a different corporate competitor to develop, to, uh, develop or, or to produce the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Um, yeah, they're both making money. <laughs> These sorts of partnerships happen all the time. It's not like they came together out of the goodness of their heart to provide these vaccines. No, they are right now trying to push Joe Biden to punish poor countries that asked for the vaccine uh, uh, IP to be waived so that they can mass produce the vaccine without needing to pay companies like Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer and others. So these are not like <laughs> treating these companies as if they're look how great these companies are. The big pharma coming together just for the people to develop this vaccine. No, they did it because they're all making money. That's 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 why they did it. But sure, I guess it's good they're making more of the vaccine. Um, now, some of the good stuff. The uh, vaccine should be available to everyone by May. So you should be able to at least schedule your appointment by May 1st. That's incredible. And really, as I showed you earlier before the speech, if you were here, the U.S. is doing pretty good compared to other countries. Now, obviously, Israel, way at the top here, again, as I discussed before, doesn't include Gaza or the West Bank. Um, but you see here, once you get past this giant gap, U.K. doing pretty good, U.S. up there, and then everyone else is kind of down here. Um, and obviously, there's more countries in this that are not in this list, but that's typically how it's been going. The U.S. is actually doing pretty good with their vaccination rate. And uh, I mean, part of the reason is because these are American companies developing the vaccine and they're mass producing it so uh they kind of get to decide but again when uh, when, the, when the u.s government actually wants to accomplish something they can get it done because they have the ability the capital to do so now uh where was i um so yeah so he mentioned how his goal was to have 100 million shots by uh, in arms by uh, the uh, in the first 100 days. Now it's going to be the first 60 days. That that initial goal was always incredibly low. Um, in fact, when Biden first announced that he was aiming for 100 million shots in arms in the first 100 days, um, people thought that was like he would. The media questioned him on that, saying that isn't that kind of low? And <laughs> very rarely. In the past, you really did not see the media push uh, presidents on not doing enough for people. Um, but here they were actually questioning Joe Biden on that. And uh, because it was always he was always lowballing it so that he can come out today and say, hey, look at me. We exceeded our goal. Yeah, because your goal was incredibly low. But again, still, it's a great number. It's successful. Uh, their approach here has been successful. So nothing against that. But just in terms of the politics of it, uh, of the optics of it, he knew exactly what he was doing from the start. Also, um, so they're, yeah, right now they're aiming for 2 million shots a day, which seems pretty good. Um, though it's hard to know. I have no real, you know, reference point for that, except for just looking at this graph. But 
considering how they're doing. I imagine it's going pretty well. And um, they're gonna, there's going to be a website set up to set up to uh, find out where you're going to get the shot. I imagine that site will be cra will crash <laughs> once that goes live. But uh, look for that. Also, Biden says they're aiming to open a majority of K-8 grade 8 schools within the first 100 days in office. Again, let's hope that means teachers by that point are vaccinated and, uh, you know, I've always been very skeptical of opening schools up early because it, kids can still get the virus. And even if they aren't impacted by it, they're getting it and spreading it to adults. So I, I don't really understand why um, schools were taken as this thing that could just be opened up when you decide to open it up when no, it should be based on how many people are actually vaccinated. But anyways, it seems like their goal is within the first 100 days. And um, the ultimate goal for this entire plan is to have everybody with their loved ones by July 4th. So based on the way the numbers are going right now, I think that actually sounds realistic. Now, let me actually before I get to super chats, healthcare premiums. So I discussed this in my video yesterday on the COVID relief bill, but there is a, a piece of this bill that I'm not even sure is in this list because it's, it's not, it's barely been talked about, but if you, so healthcare premiums now, um, have been changed to the point where you will not be paying more than 8.5% of your income on healthcare premiums. Now, there may still be out-of-pocket expenses, of course, pharmaceuticals uh, as well, but that sound, I mean, that's typically how a, you know, a, a single-payer system may operate in, in terms of the actual um, economics of it, similar to, you know, a, a tax here. But again, these are reimbursements, so it's not like, you know, it's just coming out of your, 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 your check. But uh I mean, it, it, the way it's so the way it was laid out for me, it's especially impactful on people who are just above the poverty lo level. So, it, someone making I, I I was reading this the other day. Um, someone making around like fifty grand would normally be paying about six point two percent of their income on healthcare. Now they're going to be paying two percent of their income on healthcare. That's a massive improvement. And if you make under nineteen thousand dollars. You pay nothing in healthcare premiums. You're fully reimbursed. So again, that sounds pretty good. Now, I'm not, this is just for the extent of the pandemic. I don't believe this is permanent, but um, these are things that they're going to have to revisit later on. And as I was saying, since it's worth, since some of you came in this late, these checks, while yes, not $2,000, should be $2,000 each. A family of four, the average family of four, will be getting $5,600 if you make under $150,000 a year as a couple or under seventy-five dollars uh, as an individual. And that's because your kids also get the exact same amount as you do. That's pretty good. Under the Trump plan, kids got less money uh, in direct checks, but here direct payments are the same for everybody including adult dependents uh, as well. So, you know, whoever's in your home that you're taking care of, everyone in, in your home is getting this check as long as you make under that that amount. Um, also, unemployment is being extended until uh, September 6th, which is Labor Day. <laughs> Hopefully they extend it past then. But this was 600 down to 300 now. Um, still, it's there, worth mentioning. Also, there was something else. Oh, yes, the tax credit, child tax credit. If your child's under six, you get three thousand six hundred dollars for the year, so about three hundred bucks a a month each for each child. If your child's over uh, over or six and over, then it is um, three thousand uh, dollars for the year. Again, this and this is basically being turned into a universal basic income as the payments go out ahead of time. So it's not like you're filing your taxes and then got a tax credit at the end. This is actually a somewhat of a universal basic income if you have children. And that's, I believe, just for the next year. We're going to see if they can extend that and make it permanent. But um, that's something to look for uh, later on. And, of course, also money going to states for various things like schools, uh, vaccines, testing, all that stuff. So I'll think, you know. All considered here, even though it doesn't include the minimum wage increase, which it should include, because that's going to be, I'm not sure how they're going to pass that without 
budget reconciliation or without uh, getting rid of the filibuster because you, you would need 60 votes otherwise and there, you're not going to get 60 votes for the wage increase so that's going to be a constant fight and it shows you that biden never really cared about that issue otherwise he would have put it in this bill he could have overruled the parliamentarian kept it in this bill used his bully pulpit to fight joe manchin and, and christian cinema and, and get them to support it but he didn't do that they just completely caved never fought at all and that's what happened and to be fair criticism also could be lobbied at progressives in the house and even people like bernie sanders or elizabeth warren who could have stopped the bill from passing until that wage increase was in there but ultimately i think they they concluded clearly that it was worth getting this through as quickly as possible because of the amount of money in here for families and that they would have the fight on the wage increase at a later date all right let me get to all of your super chats i refreshed the wrong page here we go all right let's see here rob dom says human reviewers on youtube are why i'm a patreon awesome yes actually since you're bringing it up also at the beginning of the stream but i'll remind you now in case you weren't here um my video today got flagged flagged as uh hate or harassment towards individuals or groups what do you think the video was about because you'd be wrong <laughs> has nothing at all to do with hate or harassment towards individuals or groups in fact the video is about bernie sanders praising lula da silva former brazilian president i have no idea what's going on at youtube but if you're on twitter please go and retweet this and uh let's hope team youtube sees it pretty ridiculous as i said before for me this is mostly about the fact that these videos that get demonetized first of all they hurt my channel and my ability to pre-review the videos because then YouTube questions me on future videos and says, hey, you were wrong about this video, so now we're going to wait uh, an hour to check your video here before we, we approve it. So that's part of the impact on me. The other part of the impact is um, on views because these sorts of videos that get demonetized also get deplatformed because the, YouTube makes less money off them. They have less interest in platforming these videos. So these videos are... are less likely to be suggested on other videos and less people see them so just completely ridiculous um decision there from youtube let's see if they reverse it but uh yeah insane anyways back to super chats and thank you rob for uh your for being a patron and for your super chat fanders sends me a super sticker says how's it going it's going well thank you Lawn Gnome says, crazy to think it's been a year for the lockdowns. What do you, what do you look forward to the most once things open up and everyone starts moving around again? Thanks for extra content tonight. Sorry, YouTube hates fun. Um, what do I look forward to most once things open up? Uh, I look forward to introducing my child to my family. <laughs> That's definitely one. Uh, in case you don't know, I had a kid recently and not many people have seen him. <laughs> so... I'm looking forward to uh, my friends and family uh, meeting my my newborn. Nathan Stone says, I generally can't fathom who finds Biden inspirational or interesting. <laughs> I hear you, but for a lot of people, especially, you know, older generations, I don't want to, you know, put you all in a, in, a, in a group here, but people that are financially comfortable and grew up in you know, the 90s, the early 2000s, um, and like that kind of politics, like just this flowery, uh, flowery language and, uh, you know, not much in terms of real commitments to improve people's lives. Uh, that's who likes them. <laughs> that's who likes these speeches and find them inspirational, I guess. But uh, apparently, you know, I turn on CNN or MSNBC and they're praising it uh, because of the the impact it has on how people feel as opposed to the content in 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 the speech um that said there is something there is something to be said for the cultural impact in terms of having a president who isn't just a hate-filled piece of crap now yes that also means that it can be tougher or it's it's less likely to see you know, Joe Biden criticized over um, 
say what's happening at the border or over decisions when it comes to foreign policy because he's doing it under the guise of being you know a nice guy at the same time there is a cultural impact on society when you have someone in, in charge who is just full of hate you saw over the last four years under trump there was an incredible uh, increase in hate crimes and that's definitely in part because trump uh, allowed people to be as hateful uh, as they wanted to be so there is uh, you know there's that impact there that, that i think is you can't ignore it's not the most important thing but you definitely can't ignore it ten law gnomes says katie porter for speaker make whiteboards cool again katie porter as speaker is something i i definitely would be uh supportive of bc says katie porter to replace feinstein also i would support that for sure nathan stone says they lost confidence because he didn't deliver on his promise of two thousand dollar checks and fifteen dollar an hour minimum wage um yes that's definitely why some people have lost confidence in him for sure uh, in fact, I, I did a video recently on CNN interviewing um, this young ice fisher who uh, voiced his disappointment with Joe Biden because of that very thing. So I think this White House can't underestimate what these sorts of broken promises, uh, how that will impact people going forward, because there's going to be a time when, you know, these benefits, this these checks are going to be distant memories. But what will will be in people's uh, forefront is the fact that they're still making a, a starvation wage. So unless those sorts of material differences or, or, or conditions are changed, um, a lot of people are going to be disappointed and it will impact them in, uh, in the midterms and in the next four years. Law Gnomes says families. By the way, Law Gnomes, thank you for all your support today. Says uh, and Nathan and everyone here. A lot of support today. Uh, says families with kids will literally be getting monthly reminder payments on how Dems worked to help them leading up to an election year. That's huge. Yes, they will. But I believe it cuts off at the midterms. <laughs> so this is why um, they have to extend it, because if you have, you know, these these uh, child payments get cut off right before the midterms, I imagine that will have a negative impact on turnout. So I don't know why they just didn't make it permanent, but they definitely should. So we will see if they fight for that after this. Daniel Panic says at least he's positive, unlike the other side. I agree. All right. That's it. Thank you all for showing up. Anything else? Let me check the, the, the Normie chat before I go here. Did I miss anything? I guess quickly. Did I go over this? I think I did earlier. Um... Yeah, anyways, COVID numbers down across the board for the most part, though this new variant now has definitely taken a hold in Canada. Numbers are looking pretty bad in Ontario, especially numbers are going back up here, actually. Uh, and with our vaccination rate being as terrible as it is, Canada right now could be facing a third wave. So we'll see where that goes. But um, U.S. numbers down considerably, U.K. numbers down considerably, of course, in part having to do with high vaccination rates. So, uh, and also the fact that a lot of people already had the virus and I'm sure have partial immunity to it, at least in the short term. So that may also impact the, um, the low level of uh, COVID-19. But it's, it feels like we're turning a corner, at least Americans are. <laughs> turning a corner, getting to a place where a lot of you will now be protected and hopefully weren't impacted by COVID-19 up until now, though I'm, I'm, I mean, a lot of you were. But uh light is at the end of the tunnel for sure um all right anything else in the chat hmm what's happening here all right i think that's it i don't want to hold you guys here too long um we talked about what we had to talk about all right tomorrow is friday which means I should be on for a uh, rational live stream. So I'll see you all tomorrow. And uh, have a good night. Stay safe. Eat good. <laughs> have a, a glass of water before bed. See you all tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye.